Welcome to the High Tunnel Grape Project video series. In this video, graduate student Jose Hernandez will be discussing how to cluster thin table grapes in the high tunnel. This video was filmed at the Arkansas Agriculture Experiment Station in Fayetteville, where research is being conducted on the effect of high tunnels on table grape production. So today we are cluster thinning grape vines here. Uh, the main focus on cluster thinning is leaving clusters on the correct amount of shoot length. Uh, what we usually look for is uh, shoot lengths of 8 inches, uh, 8 to 20, and 20 inches. Uh, if a shoot is about 8 inches, we take all the fruit off of it, or any clusters off of it that will be growing. Uh, something like, like this here, it's, it's almost too short, so we're going to go ahead and remove that cluster. Um, so anything that's 8 inches or shorter, we take off all the, all the clusters. Uh, any shoots that are about 8 to 20 inches, we leave one cluster on there. Um, and any shoot over 20 inches, we leave both clusters. Um, so here, this is a pretty long shoot, so we can leave both clusters there. Um, sometimes they have this little side shoot, uh, and we also leave that there. It could be an executive decision to go ahead and, and remove that as well. Uh, sometimes those would tend to, to shade a little bit of that cluster. Um, the, most, the, the most important thing we're looking here is uh, trying to leave clusters to the shoot length. That way they can appropriately um, be able to, to fully mature that cluster. Here we can see this shoot is about a little under 20 inches. Um, it goes from right here to about down here. Uh, it has two clusters on there. What you really want to do is keep the most basal cluster that you can. On this one, it may be too basal. It may be hitting that, that vine right there. So it may later on when, it, when the cluster actually starts to, to, to enlarge, it might hit that and create uh, just injury and might be a, an area for, for disease to, to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and do that cluster there that was so close to that base. Um, but you are trying to keep the most basal cluster. Uh, let's see here. Here's another, another example. This shoot length is from here to here. That's, I would say that's, that's a little under 20 inches and just by a hair. Um, again, here we have two clusters. I'm trying to keep the most basal cluster. Um, that way, it can the shoot will be able to support that most basal weight than it would be if, if, if it was all the way out here or, or halfway through the or through the shoot. Um, so here we're gonna move that cluster, and we'll leave the shoot just with one cluster right there. Here's another example of a shoot. Again, um, it's right about under under 20 inches. Uh, and we try to keep the most basal cluster again. Um, here, it will be close, but I think it will be free enough to where it won't, won't really damage that cluster, that, that vine roll or that, that arm there. Um, so we can go ahead and move the cluster that is up higher. And then that way, this cluster can support that weight of, or this shoot can support the weight of that cluster once, once it has become enlarged. But if you come around this side, um, you can really see that these two clusters are are pretty much touching each other. Uh, that's always going to be a, a, an undesirable location for them. Uh, there's going to be a lot of shading, uh, not much wind to go through them, and just tighter cluster, uh, two tight clusters right beside each other. So we'll go ahead and take this uh, this 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 shoot that I'm looking at. It does have two clusters, uh, the one that's out here and the most basal. The most basal seem to be giving on our trouble, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that one off and it'll open that area for that cluster to, to grow and, and mature properly.